Okay, hello, hello guys. Welcome to the presentation on Lulu's Garden. Um, this is just a little bit right here about Lulu's Garden. I'm gonna run really quick through this slideshow. So feel free to pause this at any time to read anything that you might come across or get a bearing on what I'm talking about as we move forward. Uh, I'm gonna crunch this down inside 10 minutes. So we're gonna be really fast here. So before we move forward, you need to know who you're talking to. My name is Jamin Mishlevich. I am the founder and CEO of United Works LLC. Um, and the founder of its two subsidiaries, one we're talking about today, Lulu's Garden, and the Mentors Coalition. Um, lead, I am the lead designer of Haven Permaculture Design Services and the personal development mentor, a public speaker, and a podcaster at the Dissecting Life Podcast. After you've seen this, you want to get in contact with me, you can do so at jamin at havenpermaculture.com. Now, Lulu's Garden has a family first uh, stewardship type mindset. So this is my little family. Everything that we do, we do for them. Uh, I got four older boys and our newest little baby there in the right corner and my beautiful wife who has made all of this possible. Lulu's Garden is a United Works permaculture project. We focus on earth care, people care, and future care. And we do that by design, develop, and demonstrate the, and educate about how we've done that education and design or uh, development and design. Lulu's Garden is designed to be a grid-tied, off-grid capable urban community food forest. Uh, it will have an Airbnb and a sustainable business, a community influence, and a support system all built into the final design. This was designed by me personally. Everything that you see today was done through my individual design uh, work um, through Haven Permaculture. Now, uh, everything that I do through Haven Permaculture, I design specifically in line with the principles of, and core ethics of permaculture, um, that being the top three core ethics and the 12 principles that guide design. Now, my company, um, United Works LLC, has a slogan, Design for Life, Love, and Legacy, um, that we follow uh, in this particular uh, rendering here and Lulu's Garden Project that we're about to discuss. I'm not going to dive through and read all of this here, but this is the detailed design intention. So if you have an, a desire to read that off, you can pause here and do that. The project and purpose and mission of Lulu's Garden was to design, build, and establish a closed loop, self-sufficient landscape in an urban demonstration. We, went, we didn't just want to regenerate the ecosystem and have an ecologically or economically or spiritually productive uh, habitat. We wanted to be able to meet the human need at every level of fundamental life requirements. So that means clean, healthy food, water, shelter, and environment, right? And then, of course, my fundamental and most bottom line need or bullet point in how we do this is to preserve freedom and agency at all levels of life. Um, I wish every property in America uh, and, the, and the world were built around the, the principles and, and ethics of permaculture design. So the project design um, here showcases a few different things, specifically a passive solar greenhouse and gave, uh, that doubles as a, a gazebo for gatherings and community activities with a cob oven and fire pit in the northern yard. There's a property diagnosis already performed uh, that identified 27 fruit trees and 23 berry bushes and a 30 by 90 back Eden style garden with nine grapevines, uh, some raspberry, elderberry, and it's all between some echinacea, black-eyed susan, and various other perennial herbs, flowers, and fruits at the time of this design being rendered. Um, we apply a lot of different permaculture technologies, um, whether it be high-end technologies or, or just real low-grade uh, moving some dirt around. The property design also includes a business. So the LLC model is known as what is, we're talking about, Lulu's Garden, but it's held through the parent company known as United Works LLC. These are some of the products and services that the, pro the, the property um, will offer uh, from on-site and then into the future. So with, now that you know a little bit of the bearing on where we're going with this, let's get into the design of Lulu's Garden. So Lulu's Garden is based in hot and humid Northern Missouri. Um, there is a whole lot in our area that keeps things pretty prolifically uh, ecologically well off. The, the forest floor is like black gold out here. Um, everything kind of grows whether you want it to or not. And we have a, a really interesting climate that provides us with a lot of different vegetation. Uh, Lulu's Garden is meant to serve as a showcase home so that we can have a local influence. We really want to turn this four bed, two bath, 0.87 acre uh, property here in Trenton, Missouri, uh, into a showcase that we can have our neighbors influenced by and then their neighbors and their neighbors and spread the permaculture goal across our community um, and, and hopefully eventually across the country. 
due to our central location here in the heart of the country, uh, we have a really reliably humid and, and hot uh, summer months and cold winter months uh, continental climate. We do get all four seasons out here though, and contrary to where I came from in Wyoming, that is a huge perk. Um, all of Missouri experiences freezing temperatures every year. This year we ran through underneath, 20, uh, I think it was 20 below on the coldest day, um, and our nights can be very, very frigid. Lula's Garden sits in small town Trenton in northern Missouri in Grundy County. Now, Grundy County has a soil known as Minfro, and honestly, most of, of uh, Missouri, I think it's the whole state soil is Minfro, uh, which is a deep, well-drained, moderately permeable, clay-rich forest soil. The soil surface is rich in decaying matter, and clay is easily found across the entire state. In our area, some, some areas have about 10 feet of topsoil, some have one foot. Um, but it's really those untouched zones that have the good soils. Uh, and there's such a agricultural influence in our area, um, all kind of between fields, rivers, lakes, and ponds, and so much rolling hills um, that it, it diversifies our soil ecology quite a bit. So to try to summarize it into just one thing is a little bit difficult. Um, but our agricultural influence, you can tell just looking at this photo, um, how visible it is and, and the effects that it's had from tillage and erosion. Lula's Garden sits on the northern end of Trenton, so above the floodplain, and it sits apart from agricultural field because we're in city limits. Um, we do have a good amount of neighboring things going on. So on the northern end uh, or uh, uh, western end, we have an active train track that passes nearby regularly. It borders some trees and some other things, and so we do get a good noise suppression because of all of the surrounding areas and property that is continuing to develop. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, I had music in the background. Um, so the complaint from neighbors and, and garages is really the biggest noise factor for us out here. We don't have too much else going on that we need to worry about. Uh, the noise suppression is pretty sufficient with, because of the trees and the surrounding topography. The property takes up a little over half the city block and it boasts some old trees. There's mulberry, oak, uh, oak and uh, a lot of different varieties that are native to the area. So some of the key takeaways I just explained is large lot size it allows for an increase in the urban design scope. Our local area community is agriculturally minded, which is very important. Uh, the community influence can be a successful core design intention because of that fact. And then the climate provides good water supply for self-stable gardening methods, such as the back to Eden method, Ruth Stout, or Hugo Coulter gardening, which we apply all three. Wide variety of fruits, veggies, and herbs are, are native to the area here, and so we get a really good diverse yield. But the core design influence is modern agriculture practices prevail today and historically statewide in Missouri. And so we do have a little bit to overcome and a little bit that we can utilize from all of that. So the property development, we, we've uh, observed, and over, uh, observed and interacted with over three seasons. So we had bought the property in 2019. In 2020, we built the first garden and we thought, what would this look like if we left it for 10 years untouched? And then in 2021, uh, we kind of had realized that we had restored enough of the, the native vegetation, restored or regenerated enough of the soils, and the overall property life had tripled that we thought it was time to implement the final design and get things rolling, which is why we're doing this today. So the property, as I said, 0.87 acres, edge to edge, has some mature oak, mulberry, maple, elm, and honeysuckle throughout. The four bed, two bath, 800, 1800 square foot home with a bonus room and an office. And the property faces west at drive, with the driveway uh, and the front door facing toward a street right there. There's really not much room between the house and the road. Topography uh, slopes north, east, uh, and then even, there's an, not very much variation across the property as a whole. Um, the high corner in the southwest boundary is where the garden sits, and the low corner in the northeast boundary is where we'll put the shop, and that will have direct access to the road so that we can have uh, tenants come and go through that avenue or sell raised beds right there from the road. The area analysis provided an identification of the drainage ditch on the far east boundary, a road access on west and north boundaries, and neighboring yards on the south and east boundaries. The heavy runoff across the west driveway, uh, rather than resloping, we decided to capture, and I'll explain that later. There's a hot microclimate on the southern yard and a cold microclimate on the northern yard. And continuing, we realized that there's a noise on the west, south, and eastern boundaries and the prevailing wind from the south, southwest. We don't get much prevailing wind at all from the east, thanks to the trees. Some potential hazard we identified are as follows, and you can pause it here and 
uh, take a look at all of those if you would like. A couple of them were um, insignificant, but but it really don't affect us too much. And a few of them were pretty there. Now the zones and sectors analysis was uh, pretty cut and paste. So this is the orientation of the property, and we have the the uh, west being the front yard, and the property slopes diagonally to the northeast like so. Now, as we described the noise and the privacy issues, uh, they are actually outlined as follows in coordination with the property. Um, there is a little bit of a, a confusion on the uh, climatic data because there was nothing relevant to our specific zone here, our microclimate. And so the nearest we could find was Cameron. Um, so this wind rose here, we did pull some data from, and then we tweaked it from our three years of observation for the property to identify what we have here today. So the cold northern winds come from the northwest and the warm southern winds come from the southwest. We don't, again, as I said, get much wind at all from the east. Now the sun, of course, moves east to west um, and we do get a really good broadcasted sunlight um, uh, on almost the whole property, but uh, specifically on that southern uh, back to Eden style garden. The groundwater flows from southwest to northeast across the property as shown, and we do, we do our best also in the final design to capture as much as possible from what lands on the property or on the roofs themselves. But we do divert anything that comes in from the street because we have neighbors who use chemical sprays such as Roundup or uh, trash or other toxins that we don't really want on the property. And so we capture what we can and we uh, avoid the, the other things. And there is one particular area that the, uh, prop, the water does flow in from the street. And we do our best to actually capture that and funnel it through mulches or uh, as it follows the natural contours, catchment basins. We use the city gutters and ditches uh, as we can and then minimize the soil disturbance while adding also drainage channels and pipes and barrels. The way that we've done that is highlighted because we wanted to explain one particular avenue. On the west end, right there where the driveway is, it slopes across the property toward the house. So we threw in a little drainage ditch there where it would go underneath the raised beds and spit out into the yard with a food forest and we could capture it in that pond and cistern um, and then purify that and, and relieve some of the chemicals. So rather than wasting the resource, we are recycling, renewing, and reutilizing. The rain catchment is done in barrels as shown here. We do that from the roof and rain catchment. Uh, the raised beds is, is uh, prolific in annual plants, but we really don't do much annual plants on the property. We try to keep it to perennial as much as possible. The greenhouses are, there's three of them across the property, um, one attached to the house, one for mostly surplus and supplies and one for gathering. And then the perennial gardening is uh, focused on the property whole property wide, but these beds identified here specifically are intended to be per, uh, perennial only. The Back to Eden style garden has everything from annual to perennial crops, and it has been successful for the last two and a half-ish years. Uh, we've been utilizing that. Uh, it was the first thing we did on the property. The shop and, gar and garage are in different locations uh, specifically to access either from indoor the house during the winter or for uh, employees or volunteers to access the shop from the road without disturbing whoever may be in the, in the home or property at the time. The schoolhouse uh, identified there is part of the tour and process where we will have a pause and a moment of discussion um, regarding PDC material or any form of uh, the design of this property specifically and to have a Q&A session. The chicken run is sits underneath the mulberry trees. If there's about four there, three or four there, um, they fall directly into the chicken run where the chickens can get them. We capture the water off the top of the chicken coop. We've racked the chicken coop in uh, different vegetation like grapes and such, uh, bringing in good pests and food source for the chickens. And then we also uh, collect the compost from those chickens as well. The pond where all the water funnels to in the low spot of the property is actually uh, a top of a cistern that it will be dug in um, to collecting water and separated with a screen. And then we'll duplicate a aquaponics example there. The property itself will be utilized also as a emergency preparedness center. And so there is a ham tower uh, that will be on the property, but to better coordinate with city ordinances, we're utilizing a tree that the previous owners had chopped down and left as a giant stump. Um, and we'll be putting the ham tower right on top of that uh, to get a little bit more height without disturbing the city ordinances. The cob oven and fire pit is located in the dome-shaped greenhouse to the uh, 
western lot and then the or i'm so sorry northern lot and then the the solar collection uh, for electricity is done on almost every rooftop that we can get um, nothing on the ground but we try to maximize the surface space and solar kind of collection we do want to do some micro turbines throughout the property. So we have micro hydroelectric when inside the gutters and the rainwater uh, pipes and tubes um, after screens and filtrations so that we can have a little bit more increase in power generation during the time where there is no sunlight. Um, we have wind as well. And so the, all of these sources collectively do uh, amplify and, and produce a good amount of wattage, but individually they really don't. There, there may be one watt at a time. And so uh, we do have a surplus of, of ideas and, and methods to continue to capture electricity year round. The tour that we want to do around the property is, is uh, demonstrated as such. And the reason for that is specifically for community involvement. That's a free tour we're going to offer to uh, kind of spread the word and let people know what we're doing and help to encourage others to do the same. The zoned map is outlined as follows. The main house is a zone zero, and then the front backyard is zone one with the kitchen gardens. And then zone two is the outer edges of the garden and the greenhouse. Zone three is the food forest and the uh, shop in the back with the chicken coop. And zone four is virtually untouched. It's a uh, harvested for berries around the dome, and then we have some hives back there as well. And then zone five is something we just let and watch. Uh, let's sit as it is and sit and watch it from a distance, really. We don't touch that at all. Um, it, it, even right now, it's kind of a weed mess back there. But we intend on, on uh, cleaning it up a little bit to do some bamboo back there uh, to separate us from our neighbors. So that's Lulu's Garden. Um, if you have any questions, this is the final design rendition right here. Uh, this You can pause and go over any of the details that you might have in mind. And in, if you have any um, observations or, or suggestions, you can contact me at jamin at havenpermaculture.com. Thank you so much. I know I sped through that super, super fast. Um, there was a lot to cover, and I have a whole lot more that I went in on the full-length video you can find on our YouTube channel. Thank you.